Garrett uh, from Pan African Community Action. And um, I wanted to come out here and talk to everybody about community control, uh, about Pan Africanism, or at least, you know, show my face, show solidarity uh, with people who are struggling for freedom, struggling against neocolonialism, uh, and struggling against uh, police repression. Um, so with that, I wanted to say that we know that um, the struggles are connected between us, between our people here and uh, our people on the continent. A couple of my comrades have talked and called it colonialism uh, or neo-colonialism. And um, I wanted to talk to the neo-colonial nature and about a little bit of the history. So we already said that as Africans, the, uh, the nature of our struggles are, um, are related. The origins of this struggle is related. Um, this global colonial order, which has evolved into a neo-colonial one. And for those who don't know, neo-colonialism basically just means colonialism with black people or colonized people. Mm, at the time. Mm. So the colonial state responds very quickly to our revolts and attempts at revolutionary society, strangling the people with these neoliberal packages of austerity, uh, the chokehold that neo-colonialism has on our people, its extreme economic inequities, and its social political backwardness robs the people not only of their things, but also of their right to dignified life. Where the professional and political class serve as go-betweens uh, go to mask the reality that the masses are living in. In recent weeks though, Nigerian youth rose up against this neo-colonial order All right. or neo-colonial chokehold they, they have been in since independence. And the government, in usual neo-colonial, neoliberal fashion, uh, responded with more repression. And then when the people stayed in the streets and demanded change and that they end SARS, the government tried to appease them with uh, saying that they would implement SWAT as if that was, uh, you know, progression. But the people were aware of this. Uh, some say they were attempting to divide the progressive forces made up of different class interests within the movement in Nigeria, but that was not enough. Uh, those Africans, these Africans, know their Pan-African history. Even the petty bourgeois elements knew the history of SWAT in Africa. How many folks know the history uh, of SWAT in Africa? Oh. So in May 1968, the South African police formed a special task force that was highly trained and specialized in warfare. It's, it was its first uh, counter or its first counterinsurgency efforts because it was an anti it was a counterinsurgency uh, unit that was created from the South African police, but it was created to uh, thwart the liberation struggles in Rhodesia, what is now Zimbabwe, uh, and Mozambique. Um, the liberation fighters in Mozambique were waving relentless, unconventional war on the colonists. And un how many people know that history? Hmm. An unconventional war uh, basically means uh, that you use whatever means you have at your disposal to wage war against your enemy. So uh, these youth, apparently they knew that history, right? Or they just knew they were being played. Regardless, they said no to SWAT. Uh, here in the U.S., we know that less than two years after the formation of their SWAT in Southern Africa, uh, the U.S., the L.A. Police Department put their first SWAT unit to test. That's right. Against our own liberation right. struggles here against the Black Panther Party. That's right. And what's known as 40, 41st and Central is a, a, a hours long standoff where three of theirs was injured and three of ours was injured. Mm -hmm. That could tell us something about, uh, you know, warfare. So, um, and five days before that, in December of 69, they also uh, assassinated Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. So you can understand why the uh, Panther Party was well equipped to fend off any more raids because they refused to be killed in their sleep like Fred Hampton was. So in conjunction with uh, the FBI, Chicago police, Fred Hampton, as we know, was assassinated in his sleep. So we see two things here. The neo-colonial state has its roots in colonial oppression, 
and repression and aspirations of the masses of our people. And two, it's using the same tired solutions for the problems it creates, policing and repression. And today we see this again on a grander scale with the emergence of AFRICOM and the militariz militarization of the African continent, which, in, uh, which is in close relation with the SARS unit and, and, mo and uh, military officers and police in most African continents to this day. So in taking up, and I'm going to close, but in taking up the call, we at BAP say uh, U.S. out of Africa, down with AFRICOM. And if we fail in our mission to get U.S. out of Africa, to shut down Africa, we can expect more of these kind of units to form and also expect in the form of a solution, more repression, more sophisticated warfare being waged on our people. So we're here to say power to the people, U.S. out of Africa, uh, shut down AFRICOM and we and in SARS and we stand in solidarity with African people uh, in Nigeria and uh, all over the world fighting the neo-colonial forces. Thank you.